Hey YouTube, Satoshi Matrix here yet again bringing you another video. In this installment of the Controller Chronicles, I'll be talking about what I consider to be one of the best controllers for the NES. And this controller this time is the Hudson Joy Card Sansui SSS. This controller, um, manufactured by Hudson Soft in around 1989, is exclusively available for the NES that doesn't have any sort of Famicom counterpart. Um, the Joy Card series has been a long running series in Japan, um, starting with the Joy Card Mark I, um, followed by the Joy Card Mark II, and so on and so forth. Um, this version, the SSS, was manufactured by a company called the Fukushima Sanshui um, Company, and yes, it is Fukushima, the same place, you know, the, the disaster last year in Japan and bad times and all that. Um, but anyway, this controller uh, is very, very similar to a Famicom um, controller shape. Um, it's nice and, and has the nice rounded edges, the curves, so they don't dig into your hands the same way that um, an NES 004's um, very square corners dig into your palms. But um, in addition to that, this controller um, also has individual turbo fire switches for the A and B buttons. So you can flick it up to, to this setting, which is about eight times per second, and flick it up to this setting, which is super turbo, um, considered to be 16 times per second. So it's pretty interesting, actually, that it has that feature. So it's pretty nice. Um, like, you can play games like Mega Man, for instance, and turn it up up to 16 times per second, and then leave the A button for jump um, just at regular, regular normal um, without rapid fire. So it has the um, it has the start and select buttons. Basically, it's basically identical to a NES 004 controller, except that this controller is a slightly bigger. So if you like, um, if you have big hands, you know this, it, and you think the NES controller is too small, then uh, this controller is great for you. Um, I really like the fact that it has the, you know this the, um, nice and ed nice and curved edge here that doesn't dig into your palms. It's one of the best things about this controller. But um, in addition to that, it has great build quality. The buttons feel almost identical to the official buttons. Um, the D-pad feels real good. Um, the start and select buttons, well, they don't really matter, but uh, yeah, this controller is great. But this controller has one more thing that's really unique about it. This port right here, it, yes, it has a headphone jack. And how are you thinking, wait, how the hell does a Famicom NES controller have a headphone jack? Like, how does that work? Well, if you look through its cord, here is its cord, it has two connections that come of it. One of it goes to the controller, the other end, is a standard RCA stereo headphone jack or stereo jack. So what this does is this gets plugged into your NES instead of the NES's um, normal RCA jack that gets plugged into the audio. Since the NES is mono, um, you need to remove that and then plug this in instead. So what you're doing is for here. Let's let's demo this. Just gonna do that. Okay, there it's plugged in. Now, I need to take the other end, plug it into just my toaster NES. Just for the demonstration purposes for this, I'm not going to use my DB. Let's grab a next game. Let's try Mega Man 2. Pop her open. Turn on the TV. Turn her on. Right. I'll try that one more time. Toaster and ESs do have this problem. That should fix the problem. Since this NES is in beautiful condition. Right. Not quite. One more time. There we go. So, here's Mega Man 2, but you'll notice there's no audio. Why is that? Because the audio is being fed through the controller, and the controller has this headphone jack. So, all I need to do is put the, put the controller down, 
Oops, I didn't even plug it in. Eh, I plugged in the NES-004. Now, let's plug that in. No audio, right? So let's grab a pair of quality headphones. Let's grab the standard audio jack. Plug it in. Now you're hearing the NES audio through headphones coming out of the controller. One of the more interesting things about this controller is this little switch right here. What this does is it switches from normal audio, that's um, just mono audio coming through both channels on the, um, on the headphones, or sort of pseudo stereo. And what this, how the way this works is you put the camera down, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, if my camera will be able to pick this up or not, but when you hold um, left, this headphone gets louder, and when you hold right, this one gets louder. So it sort of works for platformers like Mega Man, for instance. There's demonstrating turbo, by the way. That's, that's uh, 16, this is 8, and that's off. You just lick it up to switch, and that's all there is to it. There is a volume slider on the controller um, that allows you to adjust the volume coming through the headphones all the way off, all the way up. So you can make it as loud as you want. And um, yeah, so this is pretty interesting. It allows you to use headphones um, on your NES controller to uh, play your NES games um, without disturbing other people. Um, the Joy Card um, Fan Shui SSS is slightly rare so this is a controller that um, you'll need to do a little bit looking you need to look a little, little more difficult than um, most other controllers but you still can find this you know relatively easily for, for most um, you know on eBay and other places like that um, but don't overpay for one of these like don't pay you know 25 30 dollars for these um, you, to find them in a good condition, you know, you should expect to pay, you know, ten, twelve dollars or so. That's about what I paid, and um, yeah. So this is one of what I consider to be one of the best controllers for the NES. Um, individual turbo fire buttons, um, nice ergonomic design, good D-pad, um, quality build, um, plus the headphone jack, which is, you know, a novelty, but um, it's still pretty cool. So well, that'll be it for now. So thanks for watching.